Our fourth and last type of fraction decomposition is, I call it improper fractions. So let's put this on hold for a minute. To make this make sense, let's go to numbers and just really get back to some basics. So I think in the last video I talked about the fraction 8 thirds. So this is called an improper fraction because the top is larger than the bottom. And what I can do is I can write that as 2 plus 2 thirds. Now that's probably pretty obvious, but let's, let's go a little more basic. What, I, I'm talking elementary school. Look at this. What does this mean? How many threes go into eight? Two whole times and this many partial times. That is exactly what that means. Suppose I didn't understand that very well and I didn't know that this was the answer. How would I get it, right? Let's say you're a fourth grader. You would say, well, a fraction means the top is being divided by the bottom, right? And this goes in two whole times. See that right there in that position of the division? It goes in that many whole times and this many partial times. That is what fractions are, that's what they mean, this is how it all works. See what we did right here? We want to do it to that. It is exactly the same, it just looks a little differently. So what we're going to do, this is of smaller degree than that, smaller than that, which means this goes into that some whole number of times and possibly there will be some part, a little bit left over. It, it might not go in evenly, right, or exactly. So I have to do a division. We want to do this to that. I'm actually going to leave this in place. So you may be a little bit rusty on polynomial division, so let's run through that. You cannot use synthetic, at least the way it's given. So let's run through it. How many times does x squared go into 2x cubed? Or what do I got to multiply this by to get that? x. And then I have to distribute. And then, because this is what you do when you do long division, you have to switch the signs. Oops. Well, it helps if I get it right. Right, I'd have to actually multiply that by 2x. And then when I distribute, I get that. My apologies. So that goes away. And oh, this goes away. So I'm left with 4x minus 10. And this is now smaller than what I'm dividing by. That is smaller than what I'm dividing by. So this is part of the remainder. So what this tells me is this breaks down into 2x plus 4x minus 10 over x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now look at this, and then look at this, right? I have to divide this by that, and when I do, this is the whole number of times it goes in, and this is the partial number of times it goes in. It's the same. If you can do that, we're now, we're now, it's all downhill. That is as good as it gets. That is what we have to decompose. We haven't really decomposed it. I mean, we kind of did, but we're really just staging it so the stuff we learned in the first few videos we can bring into play. So here we go. This, this is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to put a line, like my organization is, I want to forget about the whole problem and just focus in on this part of it. All right, well, this factors into x minus 3 and x minus 1, and I don't know what the numerators are. So I know that 4x minus 10 has to be ax minus a plus bx minus 3b, right? And when I set up my system of equations, 
I would have my x's and my constants. So I have a plus b equals 4. And minus a plus, or sorry, minus 3b equals minus 10. And that is a super easy system to solve. I can just add these the way they are, and I'm going to get minus 2b equals minus 6, so b equals 3. And if b equals 3, then a must be 1. So my answer is going to be, see that fraction? I'm going to decompose it. It breaks down into this, which isn't a fraction, it's the whole number, plus that is going to split into two smaller fractions, which would be 1 over x minus 3 plus 3 over x minus 1. And there is my fraction decomposition. Let's do one more of these just to make sure we got it down. Okay, notice what makes it part of today's lesson. The numerator is of greater degree than the denominator. So step one is I gotta break this down. I gotta, I gotta divide it. So x squared times x. You got to switch the signs. And add what you see. Just making sure I'm doing all right here. All right. Now, this is a tie. See that that's a squared and that's a squared? You got to keep going. You don't stop until this is of smaller degree than what you're dividing by. So x squared times minus 4 would equal this. And then I distribute. And then I switch the signs. And I get minus 5x plus 17. So round 1, this breaks down into this whole number, quote unquote, plus this partial amount. And we're not done with this, so I wouldn't mess with it. I would just do what you see, right? So here, I'll close that off. I'll probably have to erase later, but I'll keep that up as long as I can. The next stage of the process is I have to break this down into two separate fractions. So I'm going to just worry about this part of it. So I see that that denominator factors into x plus 5, x minus 2. And those are both distinct linear. So that's back to square one, right? That's the first thing we learned. And I see what i got to multiply by. Yielding this result, I create my two equations. I have an x equation, a plus b is minus 5, and minus 2a plus 5b is 17. So I'm going to multiply this one by 2, I think. That looks like the easiest way to do it. At least I like it the best. Yeah, this is looking good. So 7b is equal to 7. So b's got to be 1. That's pretty nice. I'll write that over here. Now I have to figure out a. 
let's see, if, if B is 1, then A's got to be minus 6. Almost done. So I need a little bit, actually I think I can fit it in. Here, let me get rid of, I'll just get rid of those. So this is my intermediate step. Here comes my answer. This is going to be my answer. X minus 4 plus this torn apart. And that gets torn apart like this, where this is the A and the B that goes in here. So actually, you see that A is a, so I'm going to write minus 6 over X plus 5 plus 1 over X minus 2. So this would be my answer. That is the decomposition of the original question. All right, I'll give you a few problems to try. That'll tie it up. And if you're in calc, we're going to move on to uh, integrating this stuff.